Hello, in this video I'm going to do a basic overview of the site content section of the command center. So over in the left navigation, click on site content, it's going to expand. We're going to go under edit pages to edit site pages. A few things you can do here from this page list. You can pull up pages to turn on and off. You can pull up pages to edit the primary content. You could even add or create new pages on your website. So on this page list, I'm going to look for my company info page. And when I click on the page title, it's going to bring me to the page detail screen. Now on this page detail screen, I could change the main page title. That'll be the main title of the page in the command center and possibly on the website too but that could be edited later through edit navigation which we'll get to. You can also update your header title. That's what's going to show up at the top of your browser tab on that page. So it could be the same as your page title or different. You can also update your meta description. You could leave that to pre-optimized or you could toggle to custom and put in your own meta description. I'm going to scroll back up and go into edit the primary content for my company info page. That'll bring us to the editor window here. You can see and I have a little basic paragraph. So when we click into the editor window, it's pretty easy to update text. You've got all your standard functions here for bolding, italics, underline, change your font size, font color, a few other goodies. We also have the media browser on the toolbar. The media browser will bring up a new window and you may already have some folders in your media browser to add images into but as you can see I'm not always using those folders to add images. So you don't have to add your images into these folders. So if we want to add new images we would go from the browse tab to the upload tab click on select files and browse to the images on your computer and if you hold down your control button you can select multiple images to upload you'll see a little status bar here and when it's green it has completed now that the images have uploaded, I can go back to the browse view and see those images. And once I select an image, get some sizing options. So you go with a recommended size, the original size the image was uploaded at off your computer, large, medium, small, thumbnail versions of the photo. Or you could even get more detail and toggle to custom size and plug in the dimensions. It will have the aspect ratio locked by default. Once you set your size, you'd be able to click on insert selected. It'll drop that image into the editor window. And of course, we've got alignment buttons on the toolbar. So maybe we want that image centered, so we can easily do that. And now that I have the image inserted into the editor window, I can click on that image and hit edit and I could put in a hyperlink or link to another page or website so I would put in the address I want to link to here if I was going to link to another website I would check this box it would open up in its new tab or window if I was going to be linking to another page on my own website I would not check that box that way it just pulls it up in the existing window and then you would hit save when you're done also with this editor window there is a preview button so you can preview the page before you save it and if we click on preview it's gonna pop up a new window you might have to adjust your pop-up blockers for this to work I did but here I can see how the page would look if I were to actually save and publish changes however I'm not going to save those changes I'm just gonna hit the back button and I'll leave it how it was so that'll bring me back to the page detail screen over on the left, I'm going to go back to edit site pages in the site content area, which will bring us back to our page list. And I was saying earlier, you can pull up pages from the list and turn them on and off. So I'm going to pull up the gallery page as an example. I'm going to uncheck the active box. 
save and if I go back a screen I'll be able to see here on this list the gallery page is now inactive currently I have the gallery page showing up under company info in the navigation bar after I publish my changes through and refresh gallery is no longer showing up under company info because it's no longer active but pretty easy to turn pages back on just pull it back up check that active box to turn it back on and save and publish back to our edit site page list I'm going to go ahead now and add or create a new page on my website. So I'm going to click on the Add Page button, which is going to bring us to our Page detail screen for the custom page that we are creating. And we, when we create a custom page, we have to put in a page title. I'll call that Videos. We're also going to put in our header title here. I'm going to use the same thing. I'm also going to put in a page file name. That's what's going to show up in the address bar for that page. Uh, you can use numbers, letters, underscores, and dashes for the page file name. I'm just going to use videos once again. I'm going to save that information. Now I'm going to go in and edit the primary content on my videos page that I've created. And I'm going to change the asset title the videos too. I like to keep everything uniform. I just believe that's going to eliminate confusion down the road. And now I'm going to use my editor window to add a YouTube video. So on the toolbar we have the insert video button which is going to bring up a new window. Now I'm going to toggle over to YouTube here and I'm going to click on the share button then click on embed. I'm going to copy that code it pulls up and paste that into the insert video box click on insert and I'll embed that video player right on the page I'm going to save that however that page I just created videos is not going to show up on my website until I add it to the navigation bar so now I'm going to move to edit navigation in the site content area and it's going to pull up a list here of what I currently have in the navigation bar it'll have all the primary pages listed out but also all the drop down or child pages too well for the moment I don't want to see all those drop down or child pages on the list so I'm gonna click on the hide all children button to collapse now I'm just looking at the primary tabs and I want to add a new page to that main navigation bar and navigation link so I'm gonna click on new navigation link and we have a few different options here when adding to the navigation bar. I could add a site page that would be a page existing on my website or in the command center. I could also add a search result page or even a custom URL. That would be a good idea. Maybe you want to add a link to your eBay store. So for this example, I'm going to go with site page. In the field here, I'm going to start typing in the page I want to add, and if it exists in the command center, it'll show up on the drop down palette. And if I select it, it'll populate the link name. That's what will actually show up in the navigation bar. So that could be different than the page title that I set, but I'm going to leave it to videos for now. I'm going to save that. I'm going to hit the little edit button off to the right for the videos tab so it'll collapse. And on this list, the top one on the list would be the far left going across on the website. The bottom one or map would be the far right. And I can just change the order of the sequencing by doing a drag and drop. So I'm going to drop that in between sales and company info. I'm going to save the navigation and publish my changes. Remember that publish button is what's sending the save changes from the command center to the website. So now I can go back to the website and refresh. Now we have our videos page in the main navigation bar. And there's my YouTube video. Well, let's say I want videos to show up under company info as a drop down or child page instead of being in the main navigation bar. Well, I could have went to company info and hit the add child button. 
and typed in videos as the site page and added just like I did. But what I'm going to do since I already had the main navigation bar is I'm just going to take videos and drop it down under company info. So you can take pages from the main nav bar and drag and drop and drop it in as a drop down or child page. The uh, X's off to the right are just going to remove the page from the navigation bar. It's not actually going to delete it. That's going to bring us to structured content here in site content. And there's a few pages here you can update on your website if you're going to be using them. Not everyone will use these pages, but you have a coupons page you get with your website package. And you can post coupons to that page and people would be able to print them out and bring them in off of your website. So I'm going to go to coupons. And we have to have a group set up. I already have a group created called coupons. Well, I'm going to add another group. I'm going to enable the group. If I don't enable it, it won't be active or display on the site once I'm done saving and publishing. I'm going to title the group. I'm going to call this Service Coupons. I could add a description if I want. Not requ required. I'm going to skip that. and I'm going to save my changes. So Think of a group as a title. I'm going to have Service Coupon show up under that group title. And to add the actual coupon, I'm going to click on Add Item. I'm going to check the enable box and type in the information into the proper field. So I'm going to title this oil change special. I'm going to put in my exemptions. I must present coupon in store, not valid with any other specials. And then I would follow up with my coupon description. You can also put in an expiration date. You do not have to, but if you do plug one in, that coupon will turn off automatically on that date. So I'm going to save changes and publish. So we can see here my group title and then my coupon. So it's just taking the information you put into the command center and structuring it for you on the website. And each coupon will have a little printer icon built into it that pops up a printable version, a new window, and it'll add your company name to it as well. I'm going to back up the screen. And once you have items or coupons added, you can turn them on and off with the active box. You can go in and edit the details or simply delete it to get rid of it. Now I'm going to move on to links under structured content. Same process. You have to have at least one group, but you could have multiple groups. Again, a group will just be a title that your links are going to show up under. I'm going to go in and edit my recommended links group. You can see I already have a couple of links in here. I'm going to go ahead and edit one of these. And again, you have an enable box, a field to put in the title. Uh, the link location, that's the actual address you want to link to. So I usually just pull up that website in another tab or window, copy that address out of the address bar and paste it in. You can also add a description, which is not required. So I'm going to save that and check that out on the website. So here it's putting my title, my description, the link location or address, and it's automatically set up to when you click on the link, it'll pull it up in its own new tab or window, depending on your browser setup. So once you know what a group is and how to add items to it, these structured content items are very easy to update. Now I'm going to move on to staff. Again, you have to have one group, but you could have a group for each department or location. So you could have a group for your sales team, another group for your service team would be a way to uh, break that down on your staff page. So I'm going to go in and edit my staff group. You can see I already have a couple in here. 
again to add someone I would be clicking on add item check the enabled box put in the employees name title or position little bio or description you could even add a photo you do not have to but at that point you would just be browsing uploading the image off your computer it's meant to be a headshot and on the staff page it'll organize it so the photos will show up off to the right details will be on the left also have a gallery page and structured content just be a page for photos so think of a group as an album in this case I've got a couple groups going on already I could go in and edit my group and to add more photos to it I would be clicking on add item and it brings up our media or file browser once you upload photos you can go in and edit and change the title for that description and add a description if you want so on your gallery page it'll list out each group and when you click onto the group it'll list out the photos you have in that group and you can see below the image here it's got the title and my description there hours of operation same process you could have a group for each department or if you only need one group that's fine so you have to have one group but again you could have multiple groups again you could have them for locations and you'd be able to go in and edit your group and I have an item added for each day and then each day will list out the opening or closing time and then for days that you're closed on you can just type in closed so the hours are not its own page on the website where it actually be showing up in the widget bar on the website so it'll be listing out your group title and each item or day and hours there's also an events page under structured content Again, you'd have to have a group, at least one group. You could have multiple groups. Go in and edit. You'd be adding an item again to add the event. And when you're adding your item, you would be enabling it again, of course. You would be putting in your event title. You would also could plug in your start time, date, or both. You can type that in in any format. Uh, you could also add an end time, too, if need be. Then you have your editor window to add your content. Text, images, videos, if you like. And then on the actual events page on the website, it's just a list page. It's listing out the title for your event and whatever you put into that start time field. Again, that could be a date or time or both. And then when you click on the event title, it'll go to the page with the information you put into your editor window. So structured content, pretty quick and easy to update. We also have the service manager in site content, but I actually have a whole video dedicated just to that. So I won't be covering the service manager in this video. So next we're going to cover under the configuration and site content the location information. And I only have one location built into this site, but if I had multiple locations, it would go to a landing page or list out each location. And when you hit the edit button, it would bring you to this screen for the location, the details tab, which would have your company name, street address, phone numbers that display in a couple areas on the website. And then if we toggle to the sales and lead management tab, this is where you can plug in what email address you want the notifications to go to. So if you have an e-commerce site, you have a section just for e-commerce orders. It also lists out all the other forms here, like contact forms, quote request forms. So you have to have an email in the primary email address field. And you can only have one email address in the primary field. But you have the CC or carbon copy field where you could put in multiple email addresses if need be. You would just be separating them with a semicolon. So you could have those notifications going out to multiple folks. So again, this is just covering some of the basics in the site content area, and thank you for your time.